here with an amazing, beautiful, awesome president-elect. In case you don't know who I am, my name is Teresa Miller, and I am the 2024 and 2025 District Vice President for the Women's Council of Realtors California. And we had the opportunity to spend almost two weeks in Sacramento and in Washington, D.C., I've invited Regina to just share a little bit of her experience of what it was like going to those two meetings and what does it mean to be the president-elect of the Women's Council of Realtors. So Regina, let's start with introducing yourself. Just tell us who you are and anything you want us to know. Perfect. Thank you, Teresa. I appreciate the opportunity. It means a lot to me. It's an honor to be a part of this group. Um, as as we've talked before, um, Women's Council plays a big has has played a big role in my life these last few months. I've been in real estate twenty some years, and two years ago I went solo, started my own company. The name of my company is Elevate by Mantra, and my mission is to help elevate lives of people that cross paths with me, whether at work or personal. And I've been on a mission to find other organizations that I can collaborate with, where I can find like-minded people. Nice. Women's Council came my, my way last year, last April to be exact, and rest is history. I'm, I've met amazing mentors, met amazing leaders, uh, servant leaders that are here to service, give, uplift others around them. It's been magical, and I, I feel it's... It's a tribe, it's a village. And if you don't know what it is, come join us because this truly will be life-changing. How did you know that you wanted to continue to work and become a leader in Women's Council? How did that get started? When you went to your first meeting, what happened? So I got tapped a couple of times by a few mentors around me and uh, they probably saw something that I didn't know existed before. And I, I'm grateful for all those mentors. I'm grateful to have crossed paths with Eileen Aldroyd, you know, uh, Teresa Miller, um, Mickey Tamofina, uh, Diana Sullivan, you know, and then also meeting some of these leaders on at the state uh, state level, you know, meeting them at national level. I think that's when I had the enlightenment. I had my aha moment of being a small part of this 86 year old legacy in an organization that's so large. And that truly helped me understand, I want to be part of it. I want to be part of this legacy. And as Renee said at the Sacramento event, you know, we it's a, it's a, it's a network that's been around and ha that has survived mm -hmm. World War II, the pandemic, 9-11. I know times are changing and you really want to be surrounded by people that understand how to evolve, how to mm -hmm. uplift, how to have the right mindset. And this truly is a tribe. And I knew that a few, few months ago that I wanted to be part of this. And thank you for the opportunity. I, it's it's amazing. It's, it's humbling. And when you went to Sacramento, Sacramento is one of our three California state meetings. We have a winter meeting that we do in February. We have a spring meeting that we do in Sacramento. The reason why we do the spring meeting in Sacramento is because it gives us the opportunity to go to legislative day. If we stay a couple of days extra, we can attend legislative day. Also, we have our voting, our elections that are also held during our spring meeting. And then we have one more meeting that's coming up, which is going to be our fall meeting. And that's going to be held in September. And it's going to be right here in Long Beach, California. So if you have not had a chance to join one of our meetings, we highly recommend that you come. When we were in Sacramento, Regina, tell them some of the things that you had the opportunity to do. Tell them about some of the meetings, some of the things that you learned. So the highlight of Sacramento was seeing the national president on stage in person. And, and it really dawned upon me how how amazing it is for a woman of that stature to be doing things at such a high level while, while able to manage her personal life, her work, and how much, how much determination and discipline it takes for her to be doing what she does. And she does it so casually. It was very, very humbling. 
And I feel watching her on stage and being able to talk with her one-on-one -on -one was, was the highlight of my day. You know, it really helped me understand there's no excuses. You know, if she can do what she's doing at that high of a level, I, I can do what it takes to make, make things work on our little small, little, you know, small minutia level of, of a council. Exactly. Our national president, who is Carrie Harnett, by the way, she was willing, it rained, but she was willing to teach yoga for us. Yes. You know, she's <laughs> out there and what they did, instead of having yoga, everybody went on a walk and they walked around the Capitol and being able to relate with someone, just like you said, Regina, even though she's a national president, she still takes the time to talk to everyone. And one of the most important things is that for Women's Council, it teaches us how to be leaders. It teaches us how to love and care and nurture each other and just want to lift each other up. So another thing doing our Sacramento meeting was we had our elections and our elections at the state level prepares you for your elections at the local level. Tell us a little bit about the elections. How did you feel about that? What did you learn? It was enlightening. It really helped me understand. Um, I'm, I'm the new kid on the block in Utah, so all of this is new for me. So it's, it's very exciting. And I'm here to learn. There's just so much to be learned. And watching the elections on stage and, you know, making sure that you know, there's, making sure that we can, we you know, we can emulate what what was what was happening on stage and just to be able to do it right, you know, uh, and the process to be followed, uh, the protocol to be followed. And it was it was great to be able to see it in person. Outstanding, outstanding. And then after that, we had the opportunity to have our governing board meeting. So again, that was another example of at the state level, watching the governing board meeting, learning the protocol and learning what to do and when to do it, that helps align you for your governing board meetings here at the local level. So what did you think about the governing board meeting? I thought it was great. Again, uh, gave me gave me so much insight into how, how to manage and how to make sure we can replicate what's being what's happening at that level into our little council here. And I, I think it really helped me understand um, it's, you know, just the rules and the protocol that needs to be followed. And we just need to, do, you know, do a better job of making sure we're following those rules and, and everything will be smooth. And I, I feel it's really helped me understand that, you know, it's not, we just, you know, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. There's resources available. There's, um, you know, so much help available exactly. and that we can, we can tap into it at any time. Exactly. And then at the, if that wasn't enough, we left and we traveled to Washington, D.C. Now, that was what we call mid-year. And on the national level, it's realtor legislative meetings. And what we do at these meetings, we're there for four or five days and we have the opportunity to meet with our legislators on Capitol Hill. We get to sit down and go into their offices and talk with them directly about certain bills or certain um things that are affecting fair housing, private property rights, and um, real property values. We get to do all of those things. So now at the national level, there are many, 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 a couple of thousand to be exact, people that are there. So tell me about some of the people that you met at nationals in Washington, DC. Oh my gosh, if, if going to <laughs> Sacramento wasn't enough, I, I was still seeking that magic potion <laughs> and I got it. I got that at, in DC, you know, just seeing people in their true element, you know, organized real estate is so new to me, 20 some years of real, practicing real estate and having fun with it. I now realize I've missed that big piece of organized real estate. And I'm, it, it was eye opening to see people there that are making such a difference for all all of us here, our clients, property owners, and you know, rights of home ownership. And to be able to see people making a difference at that level was 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 humbling again. You know, to be able to find the the leaders that make a difference and to be able to meet with them to understand their thought processes. And the the other thing that I thought was amazing, and you won't know until you see it, and I'm so glad I had that opportunity to be there, is to be able to interact with other agents from other parts of the country. 
you know, we all are, you know, have our own challenges, but to be able to sit in a room together and brainstorm with others that, you know, may have similar challenges, maybe not, um, but to be able to have this, that brainstorming session with like-minded people and professionals that are in, in, in it to learn and educate and share their knowledge with, with others was, was, was great. You know, that was truly the, the highlight. And um, <clears throat> again, to be able to meet people, uh, other agents and brokers and professionals that have been a part of the council for decades. You know, we have Jean Teagan mm -hmm. uh, at our local level that's been kind of uh, my mentor, just helping me understand, you know, I didn't get it till just a few weeks ago, you know, why she's on this high all the time with Women's <laughs> Council. And I just get it. I, I just finally got it. You know, and that's what I did. I texted Jean from Sacramento. I said, I think I have kind of get it but in dc it's like i kind of got it you know to be able to see people just making a difference at such a high level you know while they're practicing their own real estate business and their personal lives and traveling and engaging with others and bringing all that knowledge and sharing with our local network was is 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 amazing and I feel um, Sacramento, there was another little piece that really touched me in Sacramento was the gal that uh, spoke about burnout management. Okay, tell us and about that. Yeah, and I feel that's what it is. You know, we're in a people business and people are hearing all this, all this noise around them all right. the time. And instead of being defensive about, you know, trying, we need to be able to educate our clients, ourselves, our, you know, other professionals around us. So I took that to heart and I, and I love mindfulness and that's the name of my company too, Mantra. You know, that's, that's me, Mindset and Mantra and Mindfulness. So we're actually, our first series starts this afternoon at one o'clock and I'm going to bring it to our membership where it's going to be Mindset and Mindfulness with our members and affiliates. And we'll do a you know casual chat and just helping you know get a pulse on what's happening with ourselves and our you know have the right mindset. As wow. Jim Rohn said, you know you're the you're the average of five people you spend the most time with. I want to bring that to our membership. You know whatever I'm learning, trying to bring it back so you know we can share it with members around us. And it's it's been a great great ride, and I'm super excited to be able to continue as the president elect for this year, and then super excited to fill the role as the president next year. Do you feel that by going to the state and the national meeting has helped to prepare you more for your role as president in 2025? Absolutely. Every waking moment of the trips, both the Sacramento and the DC trip, um, every waking moment, just standing in a coffee, you know, picking up a coffee, standing in line, talking with, you know, I met Donna Bell and um, I think that's that's her name. She's she's in Riverside or Corona. And you know, just these connections that people see that look on your face and they can tell you're the new new kid on the block. And you know, just the 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 camaraderie, the kinship, the sisterhood, the empowerment. You know, people just stop me in my tracks to say, hey, did you think about this? And don't be waiting till January next year. You know, August is around the corner. And just the reiterating and re, you know, just the reaffirmation of. Uh, the 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 beauty and the magic of you know what what people feel and I probably wouldn't have known all this just sitting in a zoom call or talk you know just kind of doing our little council where we are yes. and now I get it now I get how Jean Teagan is constantly talking about the joys <laughs> of you know what she's the ride she's been on and I probably wouldn't have known till I met people at a higher level and met the leadership and see what they're doing so you know we can emulate and we can just exactly. kind of you know piggyback on what they're doing and and help us grow our network one of the things that in one of the meetings they talked about was giving and receiving the referrals the networking part did you get a chance to hear some of the ladies talk about some of the referrals that they have received and how can women's council help your own personal business grow Amazing. Yes. So um, that's one piece that I really wasn't paying attention to because I'm, I'm so new to it. And there were people doing it at such a high level where I wasn't ready <laughs> to take that on this this trip. But I do feel um, there was one of the speakers that said, you know, take the five minutes to engage. Yes. And I took that to heart. Every time I was out and about, I made yes. sure I met somebody new and spent five minutes with them. Yes. And that five minutes changed their lives and my lives because I learned something new I probably wouldn't have known before. And, you know, how they engage with their network and how, 
and the legacy, you know, I, I met I met agents and affiliates and partners that have been around with the council with for for decades. And to be able to brainstorm with them and just get those nuggets from them was was <laughs> heartwarming. And you know, I, I have a I have a whole book full of notes. <laughs> and again, I mean, I think meeting people at that level and knowing that, you know, they've been engaged with an organization that's seen so much the ups and downs in the last 80, you know, eight decades, 86 yeah, years. 85 years. Women's Council of Real yeah. has been around for 85 years. And they develop leaders. For example, our current California Association of Realtors president started in Women's Council. Our president-elect, um, Heather Osier, started in Women's Council. So Melody That's is our nice. current president. Heather is our future president. Um, Jennifer is our past president. And all of them started in Women's Council. So if... Yeah you or someone and you're thinking about, you know, I, what else, is there more than my transactional helping with buyers and sellers? I'd like to do a little more, but I don't know how. Would you recommend them coming to Women's Council and checking us Absolutely. out? Absolutely. And I never realized, again, like I said before, 20, it was 21 years last month of being in the real estate journey where I am. And it just, I just had that aha moment of, Women's Council being an incubator, like somebody said, for the CAR and the NAR. So if you think, you know, you're wanting to be a leader and you're ready for it, Women's Council will, will embrace you with open arms. You know, I'm the new kid on the block and no other organization would allow you the ability to serve on, on the board as a new kid on the block. I mean, I, I feel like I've been involved with other organizations this last few years and you know, you you have to spend the time to be seen and heard. With Women's Council, it's like I raised my hand, got tapped on the shoulder, and here I am. And I, I feel um, the, the leadership's, uh, you know, the opportunities abound. And if you're ready, there's enough for you to be able to serve and lead. And, you know, I, I feel the mission of raising leaders is totally exemplified in my journey. Yeah. And to, to have mentors that are here to uplift and encourage and allow you to know what your skills are when you don't even understand it yourself. And <laughs> to be able to help you grow your your own, you know, own personal growth as well. And uh, I'm sure organically, you know, business will, will grow from there. Yes. And, you know, I just happened to be in a room as a part of a, a session where you played an integral role in the entire session. You were the star <laughs> of the session. So you got to participate, not only yeah. attending the meeting, but you were the meeting. Tell us about that. And how did that transpire? And how did you feel? I'm still... Um... Yeah, I, I, I came back um, <laughs> early Friday morning on a red eye from DC and we had a board meeting on Friday. Mm -hmm. And I must, I had, you know, I, I cried so much. I lost my voice and <laughs> um, I was just so, I was just blown away. You know, Renee invited me to be a prop in her little play. Mm -hmm. And she said, you don't have to speak anything. I'm like, okay. And um, <laughs> and then she accidentally- Little did you know. Mic. That was just the beginning. <laughs> and she said, give me a mic. And I said, all I want to do is say thank you to all the all the leaders and mentors in the room. And I saw so many of my mentors in the room. And I asked Renee, I said, may I please say just a few words to thank them since I have that opportunity. <laughs> and then Renee just, I, I didn't see it coming. There was no preparation. <laughs> there was nothing going on where she just asked me all these, all these questions. And it was... It is amazing because we talked about retention. You know, getting a member is great, but how do you retain them? How do you make sure you provide value to them? And I get it now. I understand it now that, you know, we are here to bring members in, but also on a mission to make sure they feel needed and connected. Yeah. And that's the piece I realized, you know, talking to Renee in, in that in that little role I played. <laughs> and and I was able to find others that were, you know, didn't understand the magic. And I was able to actually give back within that two days of being in DC. I found this, you know, this young young agent that is still feeling a little lost. And I was able to help her, guide her. And I, I feel great that I was I was able to now empower somebody else and share the magic with them. 
And for me, I, I know, um, you know, membership is great, but retention is the bigger piece in my exactly. mind where I feel that's where we're able to, you know, let our members know, you know, we're this is a tribe, it's a village, you know, we need to be yeah. able to provide them the value so they stay. Mm -hmm. So they are the veterans that will continue to stay and build on the legacy for another eight decades. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought it was it was heartwarming to be able to be in a room with all the leaders and <laughs> be the new kid on the block and have that opportunity to share my story with with people in the room. I mean, for days, people were texting me saying how, and it was so not planned. It was so just me just being there with the mic in my hand. Now, Renee knows not to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> what? That is just the beginning. You did such a fantastic job. It was so authentic and you were so genuine. And like you said, you were there with our state leaders. You were there with our national leaders, our, our state liaisons, our national liaisons, and you blended right in. It was as if you had been doing this for 20 years. You were a natural, you know, and that's what Women's Council is all about. It's just about being a natural, being yourself, being authentic, and just sharing what you know. I am just like you, and that's why I saw in you, I'm like, okay, Regina is amazing, and I love her, and she's going to be the president in 2025, so we have to prepare her. I love Women's Council. Women's Council has become my family. I don't have a, a, a large family. My immediate family is my husband and my children and my grandkids. And I've shared with everyone that I was adopted. I was left in the hospital at three days old. So can, if you can imagine just feeling that displacement, my adoptive family was simply amazing to me, but there was still something missing. And when I got to Women's Council, it's been about four, almost five years ago, I knew then that I had found my people. I found my group. Anywhere you go, whenever you go to a meeting, wherever you go and you look and you see other Women's Council members, they're going to embrace you. They're going to grab you on. And what you have experienced, now you get the opportunity to share and go on and build and develop as the 2025 president and beyond and bringing other people. Not only do we have the referral opportunity as a benefit, but we have many other benefits within our being a member of Women's Council from airlines to hotels to cars to travel Disneyland. to uh, Disneyland to the, the stores like Office Depot and all of those things. There's so many things, but the most important thing that I see and you see now is developing us to grow our business, to expand ourselves as leaders. And you are a true mm -hmm. leader. I you agree. are a leader. I am so proud of you. And just, mm -hmm. just, just amazing. I was on top of the world watching you in Renee's session. And then you spoke in another session too. Thank I you. don't remember the name of the other yes. session. I believe that, it yeah, that was, was about um, the why, you know, the, the, the speaker. Yes, telling your why. Yeah, that, I mean, you just why. took the mic like you'd been talking I, all the time. I, I was on, I, like I said, DC was, it just enlightened me. You know, I'd heard Mickey, I'd heard Jean, you know, I had heard Eileen, I'd heard you, you know, people telling me about Women's Council, you know, it just wasn't, you know, I could see it. I could see the magic for everybody else that was doing what they were doing mm -hmm. on, on, that, on that level. I just didn't get it. And it wasn't until I was immersed in, in that magic in Sacramento and DC that I finally get it. And I'm grateful to be a part of it. And like you said about family trees, and thank you for sharing that. I didn't, I wasn't aware of that. And for me, um, I lost my younger sister eight years ago mm -hmm. and I cared for her for five years. So she, every waking moment she was with me. And mm -hmm. I, at that point in my life had probably had the best real estate numbers in my entire career, because I learned to work smarter, not harder. And nice. there were mentors around me that helped me understand how I can be a better family member, better sister to my sister while she was struggling for five years. 
Nice. And having lost her, that void is just so deep. And so I'm constantly on a mission to find either be a sister to somebody or find a sister that'll be there for me. And this women's council magic has just <laughs> filled that void because I feel that's what I was missing. I was missing the camaraderie, the kinship, and the most important of all, the sisterhood. Yeah. Um, because I, I have no other siblings and having lost a sister was was not easy. It was not but, easy. Um, this, this, fills, this fills my soul. This fills my heart. And this fills, this helps me uh, and, you know, and I have been part of other organizations. I'm, I do a lot of community service with our local children's hospital, with the American oh, Council, uh, Cancer hey. Society, Relay for Life. I've been a s ambassador for them for many years. I, we host free events for cancer survivors and caregivers in legacy, in memory of my sister. But to be finally being part of a community for, in real estate, so far it, it was always competitors in real estate. Mm -hmm. always had you know there, I didn't have a village I didn't have people I could talk with and being a solo broker and an independent broker you know there are times I can't talk with my agents you know I need somebody that I can be chatting with talking with uh, exactly. you know just have that camaraderie and I feel women's council brought that my way you know it brought me the the the, the empowerment the kinship like you know the the communication and there's no competition. Everybody's here to help each other grow, be a better right person there. personally and for work. And I can't explain it. You know, I, I just, I, I can't explain that feeling. You know, I, I still don't have a voice because I, I, I haven't cried this hard for many, many years. <laughs> Thank you I for so much. I love it. I think heart. you had the whole room in tears, girl. We was all in there crying, all of us. <laughs> and everybody's just, you know, has been so giving, has been so kind and, you know, it's it's easy to tell when you're lost. You know, there's yeah. there's leaders out there that 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 can tell someone someone's lost. So thank you for being yeah. the guiding light, and thank you for just taking me along on the journey. It, it means a lot to me. Oh my goodness, this is only the beginning. There is, like I said, it's just the beginning. In a few months, you're going to have the opportunity to go to Chicago. I'm excited. But it's called Network 360. And what Network 360 is, is it's going to prepare you to ascend to your role as president, you and all the other president-elects throughout the United States, not only California, but everyone. So a lot of people that you saw in mm -hmm. nationals in D.C. will also be there and you'll make these connections that will last a lifetime. You will bring back information that you can share with your members, not only how to lead a successful network, but how to empower the members, how to grow your business by having industry events and networking events, because the whole role of our Women's Council is to have us grow and build as leaders in our business and in the communities that we serve. And if we're not growing in our business, we can't serve the community if we have no money. Women's Council teaches you how to make money in real estate. How, what do you need to do? I mean, we do classes. There are, we have 28 networks here in California. And all of those networks are doing various classes from top producer to talking with our state and local leaders so that we can grow and learn. They're freely giving. And did we mention that this is a volunteer position? We are not getting paid to do this. Mm -hmm. Our pay and our joy comes from the sisterhood that we create with each other and from the networks and the referrals that we give and that we receive. Our national leader, Kay Murd, told us that she has given 17 referrals and I think she's received 21 just I think year to date. So that is amazing. amazing. Yes, you're volunteering your time, but as you're out and you're talking to these people, you never know who you're going to meet and who you're going to, you know what? Uh, you cover the Long Beach area and I have a client that wants to sell or want to buy in the Long Beach area. I have a client that wants to buy or sell in Orange County. So yes, just continue. So what would you tell someone standing on the outside and they're thinking about this women's council thing. What is it? How do I get involved and what should I do? 
Yes. So I, I feel this, this is a place it's, it's, I, I, I haven't been able to say it before, but I will say it now it's, it's a, it's a magical journey. It's, it's a great organization and yes, there's a lot of options out there, but if you're looking for collaboration, you're looking for engagement, you're looking for leadership, you're looking for opportunities to engage with like-minded professionals, with servant leaders, this is the place for you. I mean, you know, you are, you, you know, the, your vibe attracts your tribe. So if you feel this is what you're ready for, then we're ready for you with open arms. Oh my God, I couldn't have said it any better. Regina, it has been an honor to talk to you. So tell them one more time, tell them about your business, the areas that you cover and how can they reach you? Thank you. So Regina Singh, broker owner, Elevate by Mantra. I'm based in Orange County, California. And uh, my cell phone number is 714-883-5205. Or my email, regina at reginasingh.com. And that's sing with an H. I don't sing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just bet you could. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. Well, I have been your host. My name is Teresa Miller. I am the broken owner of the M&M &M Team Realty. I am based out of Bellflower and I cover the entire Southern California area. I specialize in probate, trust, and divorce sales. And you may reach me by calling 310-713-8459 or you will be able to click our links. We will put all of our contact information in the description at the end of our video. Thank you. It's been an amazing journey. Thank you for sharing this little time with us that we wanted to share with you, our Women's Council of Realtors, and how you can become a part. So from now until later, we are going to sign off. Bye. Thank you.